So you're going to need at least two to three of these every single week to drop them off to make like maybe $600, $700, depending on how much profit you're making per drop off. But keep in mind, you're going to need a license for the software for one drop off. You're going to need seller data for the drop off, right? And you need someone dropping those off for you and picking those up. So I want you to factor that price in. I want you to factor in the cost of the data and the cost of the license for the photo booth software when it comes to the drop off concept. Okay, those are numbers I don't want you guys to ignore. Now, if you went with the iPad, uh, no, if you went with the DSLR photo booth, like the one behind me, the experience changes drastically because now you have either yourself or a photo booth attendant producing a high quality production that's engaging with the people. And so it's a whole different type of service. And so you're there and you're making a lot more money on an hourly basis because you're including a lot more uh, bells and whistles to the production. So it's really how you guys structure it, okay? Espiritu, uh, Espiritu, Espiritu Perez, what's up, David? What's up, my man? Uh, he says, uh, people can use the Godox 8200 as well with the booth. I know that I know that the 8200 could be used, but here's the thing, uh, Mr. Perez, because I know you do photography. The Godox 8200 is is not as strong, right? So the reason I went with the 300 because I think it's more well rounded, and for the extra money that you're paying, which is not a lot, I think the um, the Godox the 300 giving it 300 watts makes it a more well rounded because you can actually use it outdoors and it'll be enough power. And indoors, it's going to do just great. But there you guys go. If you guys want to look into the AD, uh, the Godox AD200, you can check that out as well. I know how I, I, I'm already uh, taking time to, to, to check that out. But I went with this one specifically because I did a good amount of research. We got Jag in the house, Mr. McJagger. What's up, David? Congrats on the new booth. Love Mr. Professional name. Go get it. We are on it, sir. We are over now, guys, the five minutes. But I'm going to go ahead and get to these last five questions for everyone that's here. If you guys got some value, please hit the like button. I'm going to go ahead and um, answer the questions right here that are left. Okay, these last five. Let's go ahead and see what these five have to ask. What would be your best marketing advice? My best marketing advice would be that every single event that you guys have, don't take it for granted or take it just as another event. Take it as an opportunity to not only wow your clients, but all of the attendees there. So that way there's be some reciprocation of the time and energy you invested in the groups of like 50, 100, 200 people there, they're going to ask for your business card. They're going to ask for your social medias. And then to have them as a repeat client or to have them as a client that was that was considered a warm referral because they got to experience your booth. They got to meet you. They got to leave the actual event with you on their mind. That's the best marketing. Um, we still see you, David. Leanad, I think that's how you pronounce it. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking for the questions, guys. Oh, here we go. Another question. Booth looks like guac booth. Yeah, it looks a lot like the guac booth. It really does. Uh, the biggest difference is probably we already know is, is the price. Um, so uh, the booth, the booth, which face plate size has it now? So I had a measuring tape here somewhere. Here it is. So the inside of the face plate is only 19 inches and the entire head is 24 and a half. 